Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to look at this color, Payne's Gray. Now, Payne's Gray is a color that was invented by this English painter called William Payne, who was born in 1760. He passed away in 1830. So this color is from the 18th century. It has a lot of history. Payne's Gray is a dark bluish gray color. And different manufacturers they may use different formulas to recreate that color so today i'm going to compare three paints gray that i have this is from daniel smith the pigment code is pb29 and pbk9 and that's a mix of ultramarine and ivory black and here in this half pan this is from the manufacturer blocks and the pigment code is PBK11 with PB29 and PB15-1. So this is a mix of Mars Black, Ultramarine and Phthalo Blue Red Shade. And lastly, I have the Paints Gray in this Sennelier Aqua Mini set. So Paints Gray is sometimes included in watercolor sets. This is a combination of PV19, PB15-1, and PBK7. So this is a mix of like quinacridone rose or violet or rose matter with phthalo blue red shade, and PBK7 is lamp black. So you can see here three different paints gray, three different formulas. Paints gray is a convenient color because you can mix gray with primary colors. So let's start by swatching Daniel Smith's paints gray. This is a pretty strong color. This color actually reminds me of the cool grays from Copic markers. There is some slight granulation. This is actually a really wonderful color for making tonal studies because you can get the intensity very easily. You can also add more water to get the really light shades. And now let's swatch out the blocks paints gray. I have to change to a flat brush because this color from blocks this is very difficult to dissolve, so I need to scrub out the color. I don't want to damage my sable brush, that's why I'm using a synthetic flat brush. I have been trying to dissolve the paint for quite a while and this is the intensity that I get. Now this gray, it appears to be more of a neutral gray compared to the Daniel Smith gray. So this is more neutral, but I'm not able to get the intensity I want. The last pins gray I have is the Sennelier pins gray, PV19, PB15, PBK7. The intensity is really strong. My camera is probably not going to be able to capture this color properly. See how the colors are shift from the darker tones to the lighter tones. This is one really nice characteristic of Pins Gray. I love how the colors, um, how the tones, how they shift at times. When I think of Payne's Gray, these two colors come to my mind straight away. When I look at this color, this is from Blocks. First impression, I actually think this is graphite. So um, Payne's Gray, it is a cool tone gray. This, um, I don't think this fits the description. So let's take a closer look at Daniel Smith's Payne's Gray. I can see some granulation in it and that's because this is a mix of ultramarine and PBK9, ivory black. 
so there is very fine granulation in the color I like how the color can transition from really intense dark tones to lighter tones like this I love the characteristics of this color and let's take a look at blocks so this is ultramarine thalo blue red shade and mars black you can see the texture here even the texture reminds me of graphite not just the color but the textures as well so the texture is really nice it reminds me of rocks or stones granite this is the daniel smith's version you can see the granulation is very fine and lastly we have Sennelier PB19, PB15 and PBK7 these three colors, these three pigments they are not granulating pigments and as a result the paint's gray from Sennelier this is not a granulating color this color doesn't have any textures at all here's a close-up on Sennelier's paint's gray the transition is very nice as well as mentioned earlier paints gray is a wonderful color to use when it comes to doing tonal studies or value studies this color is more subtle compared to just diluting black with water I mean with black when you dilute it with water it looks it still looks a bit harsh I mean with paints gray there are still traces of colors uh, within the gray so it looks more interesting compared to just black and white the feeling you get when you look at paints gray versus a gray from a black is very different at least to me all right now I'm going to use paints gray to do a value study with this sketch that I have drawn earlier this is the reference photo I took this photo in Bali a few years ago by the way if you are a patron supporter if you are a patron of mine you can check out the value study tutorial on patron So this is the sketch I have painted with paints gray so you can see that even with one color you can get a lot of variety in terms of values or tones using paints gray is a great way to do tonal studies and this is good practice for beginners when I started painting with watercolor I did a lot of value studies like this sometimes I use paints gray sometimes I use graphite So with just one color, you just have to worry about the contrast, the intensity. You can practice how you can fit certain shades into another shade. Here I use white gel pen to bring back the highlights because um, for really thin lines like this, it's very difficult to um, leave it white. You can use masking fluid, but I prefer to use white gel pen, which is more convenient. So for some of the shapes here, I try to have some variation in texture within the shape so that it looks a bit more interesting. Like for example here, you can see some gradations, some textures. But for here, it's like one flat wash. So not as interesting compared to this area here with some of these gradations. So that's all for today's video on paints gray i hope this video is helpful if you have any questions let me know in the comments section below thank you for watching see you in the next video bye